afternoon, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to Pro Stock and Bill D. Today we have a very special guest, all the way from the United States, uh, Mr. Duncan Fung. Hi, sir. Hi. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, hi. Hi, Duncan, welcome to the program. Um, it's very interesting for you to join us because now that a lot of things has eased up, you know, from okay. restrictions from, you know, post-pandemic, you know, it's great to talk mm -hmm. about what we're going to talk about with you, which is, you know, venue, location mm -hmm. for weddings and other events where, you know, right. people have been deprived sure. for the last two years. So this will be very right. exciting. So just to start, Duncan, can you just quickly introduce yourself to our viewers, please? Okay. Yeah, I, I'm Duncan Fong and i uh, been living in the state for almost my life. I mean, most of my life. And I was from Hong Kong and went to school here in engineering. And uh, and about uh, 30 years ago, I started my engineering company. And it's about uh, five years ago, I decided to, to be done with it and sold it and, uh, and retired. And uh, I retired a little early, but then... Uh, uh, I enjoy farming life in uh, in Virginia, and that's it. That's me. I mean, I no longer doing any engineering part of work, and I do so many other stuff. You know, I am a photographer, and and so you I bought, you bought the farm, right? Uh, I bought the farm, right? Yes. I bought the farm back in two thousand six. I uh, actually bought uh, about 100, 120 acres to start. Mm -hmm. Then eventually I buy more than altogether. I have now about 270 plus acres. And, and I believe say, you, Is it a business? Yeah. It's a business uh, place for you as well. Well, when I first started, it was my uh, future retirement place. Um, and also the uh, my idea was investment. Uh, I bought this place uh, it mainly was investment for the future. And of course, I love to... We love outdoors. I love outdoor. I like fishing, hunting, all kinds of sports, uh, outdoor sport. And uh, I bought this land. It's like it's part of investment and part of the thing that I could use while I'm still working. Uh, it's a vacation home for us to start. When I bought this land, I built a, a small house, about uh, 2,000 square foot. Um, uh, I use it as a vacation home so that I could uh, take my son. I have four sons. Carson probably explain it. I have four kids, and uh, they when they quit growing up, they always come to the farm. Uh, we hunting, fishing because the uh, as I mentioned, property of course location, right? And uh, retirement, you have to look at hospital <laughs> location, <laughs> the closest one, the best, right? Yeah, uh -huh. this is the best option that I found. I searched for this land for. Uh, uh, at least five years and then uh, back then wasn't internet uh, popular and uh, I have to use all the manual thing and agent and all kind of stuff yeah right, right. Yep. yeah so so you bought this with the intent of you know for retirement and have a place for your right. boys right but I I saw that now Lake Fung is a destination venue for weddings Right. That was the idea after my oldest son got married about, what, three, four years ago? Four years ago. And uh, we went to a venue not that far from here. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was beautiful uh, wood structure. And uh, then I told myself, it's, after I did a little investigation, uh, wedding, because I'm a businessman, I think everything we think, you know, always, always round up would be uh, part of business. I was retired begin with and then uh then i realized that it's this very sound uh business then uh, during the COVID, because so much time i already have that in mind uh designing a uh, wood barn looking uh venue um then during COVID, i actually took action because they everything slowed down that's very good for me i purchased all the material from uh Nebraska, uh which is i paid the prior to the uh the COVID hit and uh, timber cost increased and I pay pretty much a uh, uh, whole lot less than what you, a lot of the cost today. And that's how I started, took a year to put it. Yeah, that was a, a wedding venue uh, for a lot of people may not realize that just like in Virginia, no, Richmond area, not even Virginia. Um, uh, Virginia, Holy Virginia are about seven point some million people. Um, 
in uh, Richmond area, which is considered outer Richmond. The overall Richmond area, we have about 30,000 wedding a year. Uh, venue is all over the place, all kinds of venue. You could have a hotel, you can have um, all kinds of churches, structures, and whatever they have. Uh, barn wedding is becoming, uh, in the last 10 years, becoming more popular. Mm -hmm. And like I said, my older son got married in a barn structure and and I loved it. I like the structure. I like the way that how they conduct it. And uh, of course, the return investment is very lucrative mm -hmm. uh, because, yeah, the cost of it, the return, um, because rental, uh, probably a lot of people, they don't realize it until they search up for a venue. Uh, venue rental ranging from 5000 to $20,000 a day. All right. And uh, like in West Virginia, I mean, not West, West Virginia, West part of Virginia, uh, like in uh, Shenandoah's area, there's some barn right there. They ask for like $20,000 a day, right? right. Um, yeah, uh, we just want to price it to, to, to cover the cost and have profit. Um, I'm expecting about 15% uh, to 20% return a year, okay? And that's why I jump into it. I'm not running the business. My daughter-in-law running it. Uh, but I just give her the uh, business consultant, that type of uh, things, All right? Or advice, yeah. All right. And how do you, um, how did you, is there anything else? So you use it as a venue for wedding, which is, you know, right. very opportunistic. And now right. it is a lucrative business. But how about the farm? How do you leverage the farm, Monsieur? Right. The farm, um, like I said, when you, when uh, United States is people here, we got tons of land. You know, not like in Hong Kong, um, that means when you purchase something, you, you have to purchase the value, uh, the uh, value to grow, right? That's part of investment. Um, but then the reason why I would happen to farm, I like farm animal, but I've never been farming in the past in my life. I grew up in Hong Kong. I was in I was an urban city. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a big city in Hong Kong. No, it's, farming is very... Uh, 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 strange word, I think, for a lot of people living in Hong Kong. Right. Um, and, and in here, um, then I realized that a lot of things that government provide, like they call them land use. Uh, land use means that you uh, you have an open pasture. They, they, they different level of price and tax, okay? Of course, American is, America is a very nice, beautiful place, but you have to pay the tax to to, to, uh, <laughs> to pay for it, right? Yeah, uh, yeah the, the tax bracket law divided in so many levels. Okay, in uh, and farmland, we call we call them agriculture um, uh, uh, land, which is the lowest uh, uh, tax bracket. But the problem is, if you don't use it, agriculture is only an idle pasture, no matter the tree, the wood, no matter how big they are, you still have to pay high tax. Uh, but in order for you, for us to, to save some money on tax, uh, you have to either lease it to a farmer to farm crops, which is you know, as you you drive through the countryside in the United States, you see tons of uh, farmland, a lot of farming, grow crop, corn, soybean, you name it. Um, the reason why not the farmer own the land, the farmer lease the land from farm from landowner. Uh, I used to lease the land to farm owner. I mean, for, for not farmer for farmer, <clears throat> and then the farmer will pay me a little money. <laughs> okay, they pay like. $40, $50 per acre, which is I probably only gaining like a couple thousand dollars, you know, for the, mm. because the rest of them are all for off trees, okay, all, all, all timbers, okay. but only open pasture that we're concerned. Um, then after probably the first five years, I didn't, um, maybe, yeah, after the first five years, I realized that, hey, farmer want to give me a couple thousand dollars. I like animal and which animal I probably be able to raise you know, I don't have spent too much time on it because I'm still working full time back then. And uh, then we realized that uh, raising goats is one of my best choice because goats is, you know, they can eat almost anything. And the value of goats, um, a lot of people, they don't, you don't see goat, a uh, lot many goat meat in the supermarket, uh, but goat is the one of the easier uh, animal to, to, uh, to raise and also use it for as a farm used. Then when we got to the farm use level, like even before I listed the farmer, my tax bracket uh, dropped down to about 10% of the cost of the normal tax. Okay, that means I don't pay. I pretty much skipping 90% of the saving 
uh, that's the one benefit. Uh, of course, the rest of the timbers, then I can call them as a, as a tree farm. You know, so many level of the uh, claim of uh, farm used, but you have to learn how to do it because every county, every state, you have different requirements. Like timber, you have to have a scientist come in, they do it. The forest come, a scientist, they come in to give you, uh, estimate how many trees, how much you're worth, uh, how you're taking care of that. But actually, you don't have to do any of those. <laughs> Right. So, so it's very, interesting, very interesting, Duncan, because you said goat. I mean, in the Philippines, right. in, in most pastures, you'd see a goat because, to your point, they eat anything, no maintenance, right. you don't have to, you know, have a regular vet and, and stuff. So, so you started right. with goat, but how many other family animals do you have now? Uh, I I have over hundreds of goats. As a hobby farm, I don't want to work uh, too much on it because they it, it does require work, particularly in the, in the, in the time. When winter time, all the pasture all died out, and the kids still need to eat. Uh, by then, I will buy uh, hay. Um, I will buy hundreds of pounds of hay. Uh, then I have to feed them uh, during winter time. I mean, at least three months of time that I will be busy uh, every week that I have to put uh, hay on the uh, to feed them because goats are not animal very hard to. Uh, uh, they don't they don't keep the hay clean, right? They eat and do the same thing, do the business. Um, that's why all the hay have to be fresh and have to make sure they have also have water as well. Okay. I see. Yeah. So aside from goats, are there any other animals that you're- uh, I got pigeons, uh, then I think because of any venue, then I get into uh, 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 homecoming, I mean, homecoming pigeons, uh, all the way in color. And so I can uh, listen to the uh, wedding couple uh, to have uh, pigeon or dove release. Uh, that's part of the fun thing. And again, they will all come home after they pay the money. <laughs> you know, they're, they're not being sold, but they are just do the show and that's it. Did you build uh -huh. your house in the farm? Yes, I did. I built, I, uh, currently we live in a lock home and I um, basically designed it so that the, uh, uh, the company who cut the timber um, then they ship all the timber here, then we build it as a yeah, stack building. Yeah, well, I build that one. Yeah, and I build uh, the wedding venue too. Um, yeah, this house we, we live in is about 3,500 square foot, um, a little close to that with a garage and about 4,000 square foot, something like that. Right. Um, yeah, I build that one. Mm -hmm. Are you able to host, um, so for instance, if you had a wedding event, um, can people actually uh, stay there? Can you stay in my house? No, I actually built um, the three houses in here in my property. Uh, first house, a vacation home that I built uh, is a Cape Cod. Now it's becoming my guest house. It means people come over, you know, overseas to come to visit a friend of mine. Want to come here, then they can live in the guest house. The main house, will, of course, we live in. My, my William and I, uh, all my boys are grown up and when they come home with their, my grandkids, they will come to stay with us, either the guest, guest house or come to stay in the main house. Yeah. Um, the wedding venue is about um, about uh, 400 yards from my main house uh, on the other lot uh, that I built about, uh, last August, actually live almost a year now, yeah. Um, yeah, that one uh, is about uh, 50, 5, 5,000, 5,400 square foot, something like that. Right. Yeah, wedding venue got a lot of permit procedure need to be uh, be aware, you know, not everybody can, you know, can build it and get that wedding uh, started. You have to get through all the county requirements, get all the permits in state that, so that you can rent it out for wedding. <clears throat> okay. Right. And then... Uh they have a choice of either staying there overnight or they just drive in? Uh, no, no, uh, technically, no. Um, because when you live in uh, a house, uh, short term for rental, they call them lodging. In a lodging situation, you have to get a special permit lodging. Uh, we haven't had that yet. Yeah, right. for people, because most of the people wedding within uh, an hour drive. Okay, you know, most of the people, if they get uh, married here, uh, use this venue, it's about an hour. An hour driving to stay is nothing, relatively. You know, people have no problem with traveling an hour away. Uh, yeah, 
So, so it's really just a venue because lodging would require a different permit, a different tax, I suppose. Right. right, right. Because we have we have so many hotels nearby. Like I said, found a land, not to say a land in nowhere. Uh, we are about uh, 15, 20 minutes from the hospital. Walmart only like maybe another 20 minutes. You know, it is very convenient here. Um, yeah, we have hotels surrounding because we are very close to the base, uh, military base. Uh, it's about wow. uh, maybe uh, 10 miles. Uh, we have a major uh, Fort Lee as a military base here. Uh, yeah, one of the largest in Virginia. Yeah. So that's fantastic. So for those who are, are watching us and would be interested to know more about uh, Lake Fungs, how would they get in touch right. with you? Yeah, you can go uh, to uh, www.lakefungbarn.com and go to contact or yeah, you can uh, or email me uh, and through the website you can email me uh, or you can uh, email me with my personal email address is, is duncanfung9099 at gmail.com. Yeah, you can do that as well. I have no problem to tell them what they have to watch out for and show them some tricks and no knowledge how to do that all right all right. All right so again yeah. thank you so much for your time duncan i hey, guess you're welcome. Are watching us regardless of their location in the globe you know weddings will okay. continue so it's always all right. to, you know have a venue again thank that you for joining us today all right you're welcome you're very welcome all right, all right. thank you thank you